So imagine that you're sitting at a dinner table. I'm having a conversation with you, but without me even noticing, you can eavesdrop on a different conversation elsewhere. You can move your internal spotlight of attention. That seems like a really important fundamental way that we interact with our world. My name is Michael Halasa. I'm an assistant professor at the uh, NYU Neuroscience Institute, and I was born in Amman, Jordan in 1980. Growing up, I was good at math and physics, so I always wanted to be a scientist in some way. I was very curious to understand the underlying physical nature of human psychology and the human condition. My lab studies processes such as attention and executive function. A lot of neurological and psychiatric diseases are perturbations in those fundamental processes. The outer part of the brain is called the cortex. It's involved in sensation, we know it's involved in action, memory, etc. But it turns out that almost every part of the cortex is connected to this small egg-like structure in the middle of the brain called the thalamus. If we knew a little bit more about how the thalamus functioned, we'd have a much better idea of how the mind was constructed. The thalamic reticular nucleus, or the TRN. It's the shell of inhibitory neurons that surrounds the thalamus. So these neurons basically are ones that stop signals from leaving the thalamus to go to the cortex. There are human conditions that are associated with attentional and perceptual problems, like autism spectrum or ADHD, that are genetic in nature, meaning that a single deletion of a gene would give you things like autism or ADHD. And it just so happened that one of those genetic deletions were of a gene that was selectively expressed in the TRN during development, called patch D1. What we found is that the function of the TRN is suboptimal when you remove patch D1 from mice, and then these mice become much more sensitive to noise. It's much harder for them to make perceptual judgment when there's interference, which is very similar to what many of these children have. We've been able to reverse some of these symptoms in the mice. And now, one of the things that we would want to do is see what we can do for the kids. You can't have a thought without having this thalamic amplifier, and that's a really important thing for everything. How do we miss this? Because it's so fundamental, right? But I think there's going to be plenty of things that we're going to be surprised by as we move forward that will be relevant to, to the nature of the human condition.